Yeah, Th- that is great. So earlier days, back in grad school, building a model, a machine learning model, it was uh, many things that we did uh, as our PhD dissertation. Now it is available maybe as a single library or single function call in R or Python or MATLAB, right? So a lot of this ha- has been due to open source. And you have been a big proponent of open source. Your second startup actually was all about open source. Yeah. So uh, do you think that uh, the companies that have closed source models like OpenAI, will they be actually leading or it will be more open sourced uh, models? Uh, so where do you see this uh, whole thing going? Yeah, I, I love this question. This is a great question. So first, I want to highlight open source is a means to an end. It's not the end, right? So there's some people that think open source, I want to do something because it's open source or I want to build an open source company. No, you, you're trying to build a company that is, for, in our case, we're building AI assistance, right? In Red Hat's case, we're building an open system. And then open source is it, or Cloudera's case, we're building a big data platform. And open source is a way that you can do that in a business or run that business in a better way. Uh, the answer to your question, though, is both meaning both proprietary systems and open source systems over history, I get, at least if I look at history, and if I take a page out of history, both can exist and both can be successful. Like as long as the proprietary system is uh, well-funded and can keep uh, uh, innovating and advancing at a high enough rate to compete with the open source. So many examples of this in history, right? So if you look at uh, opening systems, uh, we have Linux, we have Windows. Windows is a very, very dominant opening system still. If you look at uh, the phones, we we have uh, Apple, completely closed, completely proprietary. We have Android, completely open. Both very, 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 very successful. But, uh, if you look at uh, models right now, large language models, we have uh, GPT uh, and we have uh, Sonnet and Claude. But then we also have Llama and we also have Arctic from Snowflake and we have Mistral. So I, I believe the answer is going to be both. You're going to have both open source options and uh, proprietary options. Open source will tend to win if the proprietary option is not good enough, then open source will win. And, and that happened in the opening system world. Like in the opening system world, Linux killed almost all other Unix flavors. Like there was, who remembers Solaris or who remembers Sun OS? <laughs> right? there, there was many really, really good uh, opening systems out there that disappeared after Linux came to be because they couldn't really exceed it. And so you either have to have a, a technical capability that goes beyond the open source uh, or in the case of Microsoft uh, with Windows, you need to have the ecosystem, like you highlighted earlier, that was a very valid observation, Raja, that is strong enough that will maintain you even as open source tries to compete with you. Okay. Makes sense? Yeah, it does. It does. And then, and then for Victara specifically, I'm a very, I'm still a very big believer in open source as something you should uh, use in your business. And that something is good. You're giving back to the community. So we're balancing that. At, at Cloudera, we were all open source. And I'll tell you, I would never do all open source again. It's very hard to run a business successfully at scale when you're all open source, because it becomes very hard to differentiate. And not only do you get big vendors like Amazon jumping in and competing with you uh, by just grabbing your open source, but you also get your customers uh, at some point telling you, oh, I'll just go hire five people to do this instead of you, right? Mm-hmm. right? I would rather pay people to do it than pay you as a vendor. So uh, my advice is you always have to balance how much open source you're doing as a business. And at Victoria, we chose that balance in, in a certain way where we're re- releasing some of our models as open source, not all of our models. So, for example, one of our most successful models right now is a model called the Hughes Hallucination Detection Model, or HHEM for short. It's the number one model right now on Hugging Face for doing hallucination detection. So if you go to Hugging Face and just search for hallucination, you will see that the open source model come up. And then we leverage that model now to create also a leaderboard on Hugging Face, which ranks, it became now the industry standard benchmark. Every single model comes, they rank themselves and add themselves to the dashboard. So it's a leaderboard for what are the top models that hallucinate the least when you're doing RAG, right? So when you're doing RAG specifically, which model should I try to angle anchor myself to to minimize hallucinations within my infrastructure? So I highly recommend for those of you building uh, systems that I want to minimize hallucinations to take a look at that leaderboard. 